Hello, I'm Mark. I'm Casey. <laughs> and he's Patrick. Yeah. <laughs> Patrick, you lost your mic, I, but uh, yeah. you'll you'll come back after the title. Roll the title, Casey. You're watching the Tesla Life Express. And Patrick's back with a vengeance this time. The microphone <laughs> working well. We've been having all sorts of mic issues uh, today for some reason, but uh, we'll roll yeah. with it. We'll roll as with it. As soon as it said it was recording. It, it it my screen refreshed and that's why I oh, was out. Okay. Uh, I thought you were like pretending to hold still. <laughs> <laughs> well, we thought we would talk a little bit about the Tucker Carlson video that just came out this week with the Cybertruck. Apparently, he reached out to Elon and uh, asked him for a truck to demo uh, to give to somebody in Maine, the state of Maine, uh, to see someone that uses a truck every day. They wanted to see how the Cybertruck would hold up uh, to its use uh, for that particular individual. And I, and I understand through the course of the video that this person is going to have the truck for a whole month. So they're Ooh. testing it, not just the regular stuff, but they're actually living with it. Uh, this person mm -hmm. owns a sawmill uh, in rural Maine, western Maine. And um, through the course of the video, which we'll certainly link below in the show notes if you'd like to see it yourself, um, they, uh, they talk about uh, his daily commute, what he does, how he hauls things with the truck, where he goes with the truck, how far he goes on an average day. Uh, if the truck is conducive to charge, uh, can, where can he charge? Uh, has he looked at uh, any other places outside of his home to charge? They even talk about uh, how he's been received in the circle of friends. How, uh, how people are treating him now that he's driving this, this spaceship in Western Maine, which certainly stands out like a sore thumb. Like it is, it is definitely an attention grabber. Uh, and he talked uh, about some of his friends want, not wanting anything to do with the truck, um, such as comments like, don't park beside me. I don't want to see that thing anywhere near my truck. Uh, and, and, and others that said, can I take it for a spin? I'd like to see what it can do. So he's got the full gambit uh, of reactions from uh, friends and relatives uh, and acquaintances. And um, But uh, I, I think what I was most impressed with was that um, he was using this truck as a regular truck. He was just doing his regular thing that he does, cruising on back roads, driving through creeks, you know, doing, you know, dr driving this vehicle like he, like he is his own Silverado that he owns. So I was impressed. What did you guys think about the, about the video? When it came across my feed, I was busy with other stuff, but it was like an hour long. So I was like, well, at least let me kind of click through it. And I was impressed that every time I clicked somewhere else on the timeline, the, 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 the dude was like using it as a work truck or, or smiling and laughing along. So I was like, oh, that's got to be good. I'll, I'll try and watch it over the weekend or something. Yeah. Yeah, I like that his normal truck is a F-350. So that's not a, a wimpy mobile. And uh, the fact that when he was using the Cybertruck, it could do everything that he had was doing with his F-350, right? So, I mean, Ford has the 150, which is their most their, uh, the best-selling vehicle in the U.S., and the, a bigger version is the 250, and an even bigger version is the 350. So this was comparing to that with the Cybertruck. And... Um, he did say it's an, uh, the Cybertruck's expensive, but then he said, I've also seen a lot of $80,000, $90,000 trucks uh, that, that my friends and coworkers here are buying. So uh, it, it's uh, not unheard of to spend that much on a truck nowadays. Trucks used to be you know, utilitarian, uh, uh, bench seats, no frills, and now they've got king cabs and luxury this and cup holders that and leather this. And um, so, so there's definitely a, a whole spectrum of, of trucks prices and uh tesla fits right in the cool thing was when he was pulling his trailer and i don't remember the weight of the trailer he was like it feels like it's not even there but eleven thousand pounds he said okay yeah and uh yeah so that's and and like you said he has a lumber mill right so he's he's hauling serious stuff and um with the tesla it was just easy peasy yeah the only way that i know this trailer behind my model x uh especially when it's full is is because I could see the range going down and, and 
<laughs> uh, you can see that uh, whether on city or on the highway, but that's that's really my only uh, concern with them about towing. Uh, they they do it well. It's, they they go, they stop. Uh, sometimes mm -hmm. uh, if, if you if you're not worried about range and somebody wants to be uh, kind of a jerk, uh, you can kind of like you know they're trying to jack you at the um, get in front of you at the at the light, and you can just say, yeah, just leave them in the dust. Very much like the Model X. Uh, <laughs> uh, Exactly. Uh, the Alfa Romeo or the Tiber truck towing the, the Porsche, racing the Porsche. Uh, those, those were not right. unrealistic. Tesla does not make slow vehicles. And if yeah. you want to step on that lightning pedal, you can make it go. Yeah. It's, yes. It's, uh, it's, it's, yeah. He certainly was enjoying the would, he would All right, Mark, you're having mic issues again. Sorry. Okay. Uh, what, are you, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll say a line while you can get that fixed. I thought was cool, even though some of his neighbors had political issues with it, is that this is showing the truck in a real world environment where it's getting things done. And that eventually is going to make it not a political football. It's just going to be another choice. And I yeah. think that's great. I, I still don't understand how, you know, it, to this day, we're still dealing with it as a political issue. I mean, uh, look at how at your operating costs. Look at the fact you can make your own fuel at home. I mean, mm -hmm. aren't these the same people who were, who were moonshiners back in the day that are fighting this? Right. Uh, if you want energy independence, if if you want to be able to uh, put up solar panels and 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 fuel your vehicle yourself, this is the way to do it. Am I back? You're back. Yes. You're good okay. Now. So it's it is interesting that um, that he was having a blast driving it, like just you know yeah, putting yes. uh, pushing on the lightning pedal. And jumping, you know, right up to 60, 70 miles an hour in a back road. He was a little bit more braver than I would be pulling an 11,000 pound trailer <laughs> on a back road. But uh, he was even out there trying to get some air off a few hills. Um, oh, wow. He, uh, he uh, of course, pumped up the battery pack to travel through a creek. Uh, it was a very low creek. It wasn't really required to do what he did. But it was, it was interesting to see that he went in and pressurized the battery pack. We did the 10 minutes and then drove through a creek bed. But um, it, it, it was interesting to watch him, as mentioned, uh, do his regular routine and uh, mm -hmm. take Tucker along. Obviously, he was performing a little bit for Tucker. They stopped at a friend's place and they talked to him. He's the one who had the Silverado. As Patrick mentioned, this gentleman had the F-350. But um, they talked to another gentleman about it, and he was very positive about what the truck could do. Obviously, the price is a, a big one compared to the, the used Silverado he had from 1987. There's going to be a huge difference in pricing. But um, he enjoyed uh, the truck's abilities as well, the, the instant torque, the pull. As Patrick mentioned, not even knowing you have a trailer attached to you because – the, the uh, instant torque uh, allows the truck to compensate for the weight and uh, lets the driver, um, you know, be in complete control by still having this extra weight, not really being affected by it, which is fantastic. I'm also glad to hear that the guy uh, either read the manual or looked at the, the, the help videos and, and, and was trying out features and using them the way that they were. Uh, designed mm -hmm. unlike uh, the first couple stories we heard when the first owners got there. Oh, I washed it and I got the button stuck or whatever. <laughs> um. <laughs> and and when they um, when they first uh, loaded the truck, they were gonna they hooked it up to a trailer and they were filling the trailer with dirt to go for a, a drive with it. And um, I thought for sure they're going to start dumping it in the bed, but no, no, they had a trailer, a, a big trailer, <laughs> and that's where they were putting the dirt. But uh, it was it was interesting to to watch him. Uh, like he's got his own sawmill, so he's cutting uh, lumber. He's bringing in lumber from his pine forest. He's cutting it up. He's delivering it. Uh, he's using it himself. Uh, he uses the the truck to tow scrap around. Uh, all sorts of different you know farm type uses, rural type uses. And it's interesting to see that he's got it for a month. So I I don't know if there's going to be follow up videos. Uh, Carlson kind of indicated there would be, but I don't know if there will be. But certainly I will watch it again uh, if he comes back on because I'd like to learn a little bit more about how he feels after owning a truck for a, a few weeks and operating it uh, on a daily basis. I'll be, be sitting there with two of them and one of them's actually his. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice, yeah. Yeah. And um, this is a related 
a different video, but related. Um, there's a channel called Whistling Diesel, and they hmm. just did a Cybertruck review too. And I think it, it appeals to some of the same audience that uh, is into diesel and to show, hey, look, there's another alternative. And um, it was a torture uh, test. test. He, yeah, he <laughs> abused that vehicle. But but uh, at least it was a fair test, and there were points where it won and points where it lost, and and that's understanding that it's not exactly the same, but it has strengths and it has weaknesses. That's exactly yeah. the right way to look at it. Does and then and then you determine does that where its strengths is that what I need, and where if it's if it's not, then maybe that's not the right vehicle. I don't want to just say everybody should buy electric. I want you to buy electric if it fits your needs, and if not, maybe five years from now it will. But but uh, if you buy it. When it doesn't fit your needs, you're going to be hating yeah, it, and that's not exactly. what I want. Those thirteen. Oh, speaking of which, that that uh, study we complained about a few months ago uh, said thirty-one percent of EV owners go back to gas. Uh, it, it was actually thirteen, and 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 still of that, um, we're still probably mostly looking at people who who bought the, either the wrong EV for their 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 needs, or uh, they didn't have charging regularly available to them. Uh, yes. Yeah, you definitely have to check off those boxes before buying. EV yeah. owners certainly have to do some homework before they purchase the vehicle. And, and you're right. Right sizing for what you're after makes complete sense. And the other big thing, as Casey mentioned, is how are you going to charge it at night? What is your plan? Where are you going to do it? What's your plan B? So you've mm. got to have those things checked off in order to have a successful transition to electrification. Yeah, Absolutely. so if you have a 600-mile commute and you get a 200-mile range EV, you're not going to have fun time. And if right. you, um, if, if somewhere you park the car for a long period of time, either at work, at lunch, at home, if it's not sitting there on a plug at one of those places, every time you do the, you're, you're probably also not going to have a, a comfortable time. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to reach out to the people watching this video, and I'd like to ask you specifically, when Cybertruck is available for a test drive at your Tesla showroom, will you be wanting to test drive this truck? Is Has it enticed you enough to see what the all-wheel steering is like, uh, the speed, the, the, uh, the jump that you get in that truck? Has it been enticing enough for you to go take a free test drive? I, I'm just curious. In the comments, let us know. If it's available in your area, will you actively go to try to get a test drive uh, of the Cybertruck? Yes. And with that, <laughs> Casey, with that, Casey, uh, any shout outs from you this evening? Uh, yeah, we had a chance to sit in it uh, over uh, last week when uh, when when, uh, when we went in to, to get our car evaluated for service to determine that we needed a new rear motor. Um, it was nice to sit in versus just looking at it like we did last time. So, so the next step would be to just go over there and drive it. So hopefully that'll be an option uh, by the time we're in for that particular service. Uh, so this is the first Test Life Express for the week. Uh, you can catch us over on uh, Let's Chat with Casey Green and Friends on youtube.com slash Casey Green for Sunday's Let's Chat with Casey and Friends. And then come back here Monday and catch us for the next Test Life Express. And then on Wednesday, we'll be back to our regular live shows. Hope to see you at all of those. Very good. Patrick, any shout outs? Sure. As always, I'm with the Oregon Electric Vehicle Association. You can find us at oeba.org, right there, right there. And I blog occasionally about my future free from fossil fuels at carswithcords.net. Check it out. And my shout out is to ask you watching the video, please give us a thumbs up on the video. Press that subscribe button. It really helps us out and we'd really appreciate it. Tell a friend if you enjoy what you see. Uh, share the link. Uh, love mm -hmm. to uh, connect with more people. So uh, with that, we'll say goodnight and catch you next time on The Tesla Life.